Civil Engineering Academy, helping you in your journey to pass the PE. All right, what's up everybody? Welcome to Civil Engineering Academy. Today we are solving a problem from structures. Find the zero force members in the truss. Here's our truss and we're given all these joints, we're given an external load of 10 kips at B and uh, you could solve this thing by method of joints looking at every single joint but that would take forever so on the PE exam they want you to be able to determine this just from looking at it and if you're using the civil engineering reference manual chapter 41 briefly goes over zero force members and it would be good to re do a refresher on that but um, We'll go over some of the rules because not all these rules are provided in the CIRM. But basically, if you have one of the rules is if you have no loads at a joint, no loads, and it's not supported by a pin or a roller, okay, then you can do this rule. And that is if you have two members coming into a point and that angle is not 180 degrees both of these are zero force members so an example of that would basically be you know here's a pin and here's a roller and you had some weird truss and it came out to a point like that and there's nothing out here there's no pin no roller no loads then these two would be zero force members okay rule number two is if you have a collinear situation, two members are collinear, this is 180 degrees, and one of them is zero, the other one is zero. Okay, that's easy. Number three, if you have collinear members and you have a third member sticking out, this doesn't necessarily have to be 90 degrees, but um, if you have a third member, this third member is zero, zero force member. And that kind of applies to something like, you know, if you had two collinear members and you actually had two members, if one of these members at the other end, wherever it was connected, found out, if you found out this was a zero force member, then this would also be a zero force member because it would be the same as what you have here. So um, that's something to look at as well. All right, so let's look at what we got. We have AH and HJ. We have these reactions going on here. All right, so AH and HJ, these two are collinear, so we know HF is going to be a zero force member. All right, let's look at AB and BC. BC those are collinear, so BF should be a non or should be a zero force member, but you have this external load of 10 kips acting on that. So that is not a zero force member. And um, yeah, because that is not a zero force member, then FI is not a zero force member, and neither is FC a zero force member. And in fact, let's well let's jump to this side here. We got C D and D E. Those are collinear. There's no external forces at D. That means D G is a zero force member that follows this rule three. Okay? And if you have J I and I E, those are collinear, and that means this is the same rule. I G is a zero force member. And if you imagine those two being totally gone, because they are zero force members, then you're going to look at rule one, which is going to say that these two are zero force members as well. IC is not a zero force member because the load that's coming through FB, if you were to solve for using the method of joints here at J, you have a vertical component. Uh, that's uh, being taken by J, JC. And uh, so that doesn't really fly there. So I think that's all the zero force members. So we've got FH, DG, GI, CG, JG. That looks like that is answer C on this one. 
So I hope that helped you out. Head to civilengineeringacademy.com for more tips and tricks related to the PE exam. There'll definitely be something about Zero Force members. That's a very common thing. So get used to seeing those. Thanks. Bye.